Speaking is the basis of oral language. If you learn a foreign language and you can't speak, like when I learned Korean and I came out not being able to speak at all, it feels like a failure. If you ever travel and you want to use the language, you need to be able to communicate in some way orally. And that means understanding what other people are saying to you and also being able to communicate with them. Then the other part of oral communication for me is pronunciation. Pronunciation is really the face of language. It's the thing you first notice. Even if someone speaks well, you notice whether they're speaking like you or not like you. And you make all kinds of judgments about people because of that. And so pronunciation is essential for any kind of interpersonal communication. Professor Levis pointed out that speaking is the basis of oral language. Also, people get things done every day by speaking. People establish and maintain relationships with others by speaking. And people notice the pronunciation of the people they are communicating with. The way people speak marks who they are. People express their identity through their speech in everyday face-to-face -face communication. Next, I asked Professor Levis what teachers need to know about speaking. He emphasized that there are two dimensions of speaking, fluency and accuracy. When we're talking about speaking, there's always a kind of tension between being fluent and being accurate. Sometimes you can be very fluent, like in greetings, and you don't have to worry very much. There are other times that accuracy gets in there and you wonder, am I saying this wrong? Am I using the wrong word? Am I using the right word? Am I getting my message across? In a second language, there's always the issue, this kind of tension between fluency and accuracy. With pronunciation, you also add in questions of accent. And what we know is that accent is not terribly important in terms of whether people understand you or not but it is what people often notice. From a pronunciation point of view, it matters more whether you are comprehensible, whether you're easily understood. This gets into all kinds of questions about what kinds of things in your pronunciation might make you less easy or more easy to understand. And these all work together in teaching speaking. The two dimensions of speaking, fluency and accuracy, work together to make good, clear, comprehensible speech. But it seems when we are teaching and when students are learning how to speak, those two dimensions of speaking can work against each other. When students are speaking accurately, they are often very slow and hesitant they are stopping to think. Their speech isn't automatic and fluent. So when accuracy is up, fluency can go down. In contrast, when students are just talking to each other casually and the words are just flowing, the accuracy can be limited. So students' fluency and accuracy both need to be developed. But it seems pretty clear that learners cannot focus on both simultaneously all the time. Professor Levis emphasized that teachers need to develop speaking gradually by teaching for both fluency and accuracy. He also emphasized that accents are normal. There are many varieties of English in the world today and many of these varieties are non-native varieties of English. Speakers of non-native varieties can succeed very well in English medium school, social, business, and government contexts. Professor Levis has already given us some important insights into oral communication. 
I also asked him specifically for some advice about how to teach speaking.